were hitting home in the living room, my living room. I'm Joan London and welcome to the really exciting world of home video. Now I've got a confession to make. I work in television, right? Well, I owned my video cassette recorder or VCR for over a year before I honestly knew all the things it could do. And you know, just having this machine really does change things. For instance, I am no longer tied to my TV guide. I can watch what I want, when I want. And I can be gone and come home and have my favorite shows waiting for me. In fact, I can see major motion pictures at home while they're still at the theater. Not to mention aerobic exercising. And cooking recipes. And they won't go too fast for me because I can stop and go back to get every last detail. We'd like to help you make the most of your machine. So I want to share everything that I've learned with you. So the purpose of this tape is to take you through your machine's operations step by step so that you'll know exactly what you've got there hooked into the back of your TV. Now this does not preclude your using your instruction booklet. The manufacturer of your video recorder has gone to great lengths to try and provide you with a simple, understandable instruction book. You'll want to read it thoroughly and keep it handy. But I think that the pictures that you'll see here will say a thousand words. And watching me show you what to do, I hope, will be a lot more fun. Now, I've got the help of two friends that I want you to meet. First of all, a manual. You know, like a manual, your instruction manual. I know, producers are so corny. What can I say? Let's call him Manny for short. <laughs> Hiya, Manny. Hi. And you think Manny's all? Mm-mm, I've got more. This is Dot. Now, watch the color of her dress. See a change? Dot's good, Dot. If you match the color of Dot's dress to the color-coded section that you want to see as indicated on the cassette box, you'll be in great shape. She'll guide you right through this tape. So, grab yourself a pencil and some paper to take down some notes, if you wish, and then gather up everybody in your house who may want to use this machine. That's right, come on over here, even the kids. Come on, Jamie. You like using the video cassette and recorder. Now, once they know how to operate it properly, mm-hmm, it's going to go a long way towards peace and tranquility around your house. Want to come help me here, Jamie? They won't be dragging you out of bed to put on the cartoons on Sunday morning. Not to mention breaking the machine. You'll really love this if you're a parent. Come on up. You love your video cassettes, don't you? Mm. Oh. This is an instructional tape for all video machine owners, whether you've got a beta format or a VHS, and regardless of which manufacturer makes your unit, all videotape recorders do the same basic things. They're like cars. They may look different on the outside, but they all go backwards and forwards. They all turn corners, and they'll have four wheels. And speaking of four wheels, let's get this video show on the road. Ma be careful, Manny. Oh, watch out. Now, let's start by talking about the basics of how these things work. I want you to understand exactly how your video recorder works and why it can do some of the things it does. First of all, a video machine is merely hooked up between your antenna and your television set, right smack in the middle. The antenna simply runs into the terminal marked VHF in on your unit, your VCR. Then a cable connects the video machine from the VHF out socket to your TV. So your video cassette recorder is hooked directly into your antenna. It's from that antenna that it gets a signal and that's what it's recording. All right, thank you, Manny. Now let's see if I can do this. Let's recap here. All right, this is the cable that's coming from the antenna, the outlet in the wall, and this is going to go into the VHF in here on my VCR unit. And here it is right here. I guess it either slips on or screws on. Now. The second cable goes from VHF out, okay, here on the VCR unit. And then it's got to go to my television set. Let's see, it's got to go to, obviously, VHF in, right? And there it is. This is it. This is the whole thing. Now, if you don't have an antenna outlet on the wall, you'd probably be using uh, rabbit ears. Therefore, look to the end of the wire. You'll have these little wires. This little attachment comes in the box. Just look for it. It comes with every VCR and it would go to the antenna inlet, right? That means VHF in on the VCR. 
That's it. As long as my machines are plugged in, I'm okay. So remember, your VCR does not record off your television set. Do you know what that means? That means that you can make a perfectly beautiful tape through your video cassette recorder, even if you have a TV with a bad picture. Or maybe your TV's on the blink this week. Or maybe your TV set is black and white. Well, if the show's in color, your videotape will be in color. You see, your VCR doesn't know if you have an old black and white set, and it doesn't care. And since it gets its own signal from the antenna, it's able to record when your TV set is off completely, or when you're watching something else. So now that we understand how your VCR gets its picture, we have to give your video machine its own TV channel to play back on. Just like broadcasting stations have their own channels, 2, 4, 7, 10, this little broadcasting station needs a channel. So look for a switch like this one. See it right here? Every unit has it. It's called a playback channel selector, and you can choose between channel 3 or 4, whichever is free of broadcasting in your area. And don't worry, one of them will certainly be free. Now, when you want to play back tapes on your TV, just select that same channel, three or four, on your television set, and you'll be tuning in your machine to your TV. Pretty nifty, huh? on your machine, which I want to tell you all about. But first, I've got an important question to ask you and to ask Manny. Manny, come on back. Now, this is an important question in the long and healthy life of your machine. Manny, where did you put your VCR? Did you give it some breathing room? You know, it gets warm when it works. It needs lots of good ventilation, like that. Very, very good. Hey, I'm proud of you. Didn't put it up too high, did you? Uh oh, look at it, look at it. Now, how are you ever going to push the buttons up there? Or how are you going to put video cassettes in? Huh? Bad idea. Bring it on down. But, oh, oh, not too low. Oh, no, Manny. Manny. Oh, 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 Manny. That was a bad idea right by the fireplace. You never want these things near heat or, or cold and damp like a drafty window. You also don't want to stack things on top. Look at this. Cassette stack right on top of the machine. Now, this gets warm. It's not good for the machine or the cassettes. All right, let's talk about the buttons, because there are a lot of them. But remember, if you miss something right now, don't worry. We're going to be covering it in much greater detail later in the tape. Right now, I just want you to know where everything is and what it is. The most obvious, play. I don't think you'll have any trouble finding that anywhere on your machine. I'll just hit it over here. And that's just for playing back the tapes that you've already recorded. Pretty, huh? Now, the record button obviously is for recording your new material, and quite often it'll be a different color, and it just says REC. Fast forward, that quickly moves your tape forward. Easy to find on the machine, usually says FF. Now, that passes by really quick, so as you can see, don't expect to see the pictures going by. Of course, there's rewind, usually says REW. And you should know, too, that your unit will automatically stop once the cassette has rewound all the way to the beginning. This is always fun to punch. This is just eject. It's just for getting your tapes in and out of the machine. Now, a really neat button that we're going to talk a lot more about later is this one. It's either called pause or pause still. Now, that'll stop the machine for just a moment and allow you to easily edit out unwanted material or to answer the front door or maybe to run to the fridge for a moment. off and topping on. See, and I didn't miss any of the movie either. Okay, that was worth waiting for. Mm. I guess we better go on, right? Okay, tracking control. Now, this is really very important because once you know what tracking control is, you'll find yourself using it a lot. They have a tendency to hide it, so just look around. This one has it right in here. And look at this picture right now. 
Not very good, is it? Well, you can get rid of that. Simply by adjusting this little button here, you can get rid of the wavy lines or the horizontal streaks. See? Isn't that a lot better? All right, there's something else, too. This is automatic fine-tuning. Now, you have to kind of look around for this, too. It's on different machines in different places. There it is right over there. Now, this is a system that can make your life much easier once you've gone to the trouble of setting it up. And I think I'm going to call on our little friend, Manny, to help me set it up. I've got a deal for him. Oh, Manny. I'll give you some ice cream if you demonstrate this for us. On the channel selector, you enter in each channel you want to watch. Then fine-tune them like Manny's doing. It's just like you do on a car radio. Once you fine-tune each station, you're all set. You can forget it. Thank you, Manny, and I'll catch you later. You do want to remember, though, that your VCR channel selector will be the thing that's telling your machine which channel to record regardless of what channel you're watching on television. By the way, don't forget your earphone jack. If there's no place to hook it into your VCR, you'll find one in your television set. And that way, you'll be able to watch all those great movies that you can rent or buy in the wee hours with no complaints from certain unlucky people like me that have to be in bed at 9 p.m. so that certain lucky people can stay up late at night and watch movies like Casablanca and Superman 1, Chapter 2. Rocky 3, 007, The Dirty Dozen, 2001, 1 million BC. Excuse me. Um, there's also a plug for your microphone, I should tell you that. You have to look for it. They hide this one, too. There it is right there. If you want to add your own soundtracks to tapes, you'll have to use your audio dub button at the same time. You'll usually find it right next to your record button. We had a Miss Piggy theme today at this party, the first birthday party Jamie's ever had, and I think she's enjoying it. She even has her little Sesame Street dress on. Look at that Miss Piggy cake that Daddy brought in. Ooh, she has candles in her nose. Okay, now here's something else that is very important. Your tape speed setting. Look for the button on your machine because this is going to enable you to stretch your tape's recording time anywhere from two to eight hours. And then, when you've got a lot of material on a tape, you won't be able to live without this. See right here, that's a counter, and every machine has one. Get into the habit of keeping track of your counter numbers on your favorite recordings. Otherwise, finding your favorite scene will be like finding a needle in a haystack. And also, we'll be talking about this area right here a little bit more later. It's called the Programmable Clock Timer, and that is so that you can record while you're away, or maybe even while you're asleep. Now, next, your TV VTR switch, and you use this when you want to watch one program and record another at the same time. Here's the switch right here, and when it's on VTR, you'll see what you're taping. Then, set it on TV, and you can watch any channel on your TV without disturbing what you're recording. Then, on your remote control, for many machines, you can find some buttons for some of your favorite video effects. In fact, the remote box is the only place you may find some of them. Things like frame advance and slow motion. We'll talk about these a lot more in greater detail a little bit Bee. later. Manny, what are you doing here? Hmm? You are gonna give me ice cream, Joe. I almost forgot. In fact, I did forget. Here. I am a lady who pays her debts. You ready? It was worth waiting for. Here you go. Good, huh? Hmm? Ooh, Dot's going to be jealous. Boy, when you recorded something you really treasure, a cassette can mean more to you than the machine itself. Presently, there are two different sizes or types of cassettes. There's the beta and the VHS. Now, the beta tapes fit only the beta machines. The VHS fit only the VHS machines, and never the twain shall meet. And also, you want to make sure that you put the tape in correctly. The window side should be facing up, and there's a little arrow here. It's pointing towards me, and that should always point into the machine. 
Of course, it wouldn't go in any other way, so never force it. See, it should be as easy as that. Now, all of us worry about putting in our favorite tape by accident, right, and recording over it. Oh, I want to show you an easy way to make sure that that never, never happens. See this little tab right here? You'll always find it on the edge. The tape, you just want to break it off. It's very, very easy to do. Take a little sharp object. I'll just break this one off here. I'm using a nail file. You could really even use your fingernail. Now, you'll only be able to play back this cassette and not record on it. However, should the time come when you do want to tape something over it, never fear, removing the tabs is not forever. Just get yourself a little piece of tape, any kind of tape, take off a little piece, look for the little hole, and then cover it up, and you're all set. Now the tape is as good as new for recording again. Now, a few other words of warning about your cassettes. The tape inside should never be spliced. In fact, don't ever do what I'm doing. I'm opening this up. This is what it looks like. You never want to touch the surface of the tape. See what happens? See what it looks like? The dirt and the oils from even the cleanest fingers may deteriorate the coating on the tape. And I'm telling you, that's going to result in the loss of picture quality on your tape. A mess, huh? Remember one other thing. When it comes to storing your cassettes, always try to avoid those places that are either damp or dusty. Uh, keep them out of direct sunlight, too. And also, don't keep your cassettes in places subject to strong magnetic fields. Now, that can be produced by an electrical motor, stereo speakers, even your VCR unit or your TV. And magnetic tape does not mix with magnetic fields. Also, a little tip for those of you who live in places where it gets cold in the winter. If you have a cassette that you've just brought home, maybe you left it in the car a few hours while you were in doing some shopping, give that tape a chance to warm up inside the house before you put it in and play it. Just a couple hours. I know it's hard, especially if it's a movie that you've been dying to buy or rent for months, but a few hours to let it adjust to room temperature will probably save your tape and your machine from damage. What's it all about, Manny? Is it just for the moment we live? What's it all about? Well, I'll tell you what it's all about. It's about capturing all those moments on tape. Isn't that why we all bought our VCRs for recording? There are three kinds of recording that you'll be doing. The first is recording the program you're watching. The second is recording one program while you're watching something else. And the third is recording while you're away. Okay, the first way to record what you're watching. Oh, or should I say watch what you're recording? Oh, well, anyway, I know this is basic, but first, make sure the plug is in the wall and that the power is on and that you have a cassette in the machine. Now, make sure to push the VCR channel selector button to the channel that you want to record. Right here, our power is on. Now, that's the key to recording. You then turn your TV set on. All right, we got it on. What's it all about, Johnny? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, Manny, I better turn him down. What's it all anyway, I hope that you have your TV set on channel three or four. Whichever channel corresponds to your VCR's playback channel selector. Remember the one you already set? Now, hit record and play. Now, on some machines, this will just be record, depending on the machine you own. Now, you are taping the channel that you're watching, okay? Secondly, want to watch another program at the same time? It is as simple as the flick of a switch. Your TV VTR switch, that is, which is right here. Simply change it from the VTR setting over to the TV setting. That means that the light will have gone out. And that also means that you've returned your TV to its normal functions so that you can watch whatever you want simply by changing channels as you always do, right on your TV set. Meanwhile, your VCR is over here merrily recording the other show. So to recap, when you want to watch one program and record something else at the same time, make sure that your video cassette recorder is set on the channel that you want, right up here. Then make sure that your TV VTR switch is on TV, that means the light's out. Then tune your TV channel to the show that you want to see. Turn it once again. Now, sit back, 
Enjoy yourself. scary? It doesn't have to be. This is the third and last kind of recording that you'll most certainly want to do. Timer recording. You see, most video machines have a timer built in, and this clock mechanism enables you to program the machine to turn on and to turn off whenever you want and record the shows that you can't be around to watch. Now, the number of hours or days that your unit can record depends on the model that you own. But here are some real basics that will answer a lot of the questions that everyone will have about programming the timer. Let's see how it works. First, you want to start with a blank cassette in the machine, and then make sure that your clock is set to the correct time. Now, you'll want to find your clock display button, which is right here on this machine, and change it to program. Now, if your machine has the capability of programming more than one event, you'll have one extra button to hit. And you can see right there, I'm now ready to program in my first event. I need my on time. Let's hit on. Now, this includes day. You'll notice that right now it's on Monday. Let's program it for Tuesday. Tuesday morning at, say, 7 a.m. This is your hour. These are your minutes. This goes forward. This goes backward. Let's put it back to 7 and forward to 0, 0. Now, the machine is set to come on Tuesday at 7 a.m. Of course, that's so that you won't miss Good Morning America, right? All right, now I need my off time. My off time will be 9. Let's make it 9.02. We don't want to miss any credits. And the next thing you want to program in is your channel. It'll be channel 7 in my area. And now, if I want to press in a second event, I would just hit this button. You can see now that you're ready for your second event. If you have no second event, then just simply put your clock display button back to normal and close it up. Now, I should mention one thing. On some machines, instead of having an off time, the turn off will be determined by the program length, say a half an hour or an hour. Also remember, for programming in more than one show, just keep repeating the same procedure. Then when you're all done, you push your timer button. Now this shuts off the machine completely and it does not come back on until the time that you've told it to do so. Also, look at the timer light. Is it on? If not, you've left something out. And for some reason, everyone I've talked to seems to have a problem remembering how to do the time programming without spending at least a half an hour on the instruction booklet. Here's a simple way to remember what to do. Think of this story the next time you're programming. A nurse is working in a busy doctor's office. And while she's on the phone, the doctor comes by and gives her a pinch. She shouts, oh, doc. That's the key to remembering how to set your timer. Oh, doc. O-D-O-C. It stands for on, day, off, channel. All you have to do is remember what that poor nurse screams in a pinch. Oh, doc. On, day, off, channel. Let me show you right here on the front of the machine. On means the on time of the program that you want to watch. For instance, we put in 7 o'clock. Day, well, we chose Tuesday. Off, again, that means the off time of the program you want to watch. We put in 9 o'clock. The channel was 7. So it's on time, day, off time, channel. And that's it to recording. If you've got that, you've got your timer recording all figured out. Oh, but don't walk out of the room until you've checked your speed setting. There's nothing more exasperating than coming home to find that you've only got the first two hours of Gone with the Wind because you forgot to extend the machine's taping time to accommodate what you programmed in. Believe me, it happens to the best of us. In fact, this is for my husband, who wanted to tape the Super Bowl. He put in a two-hour tape but then he forgot to set the speed selector to a longer play. Mm-hmm, you're right. He never saw the end of the game.
One terrific feature all machines have is variable recording speed. I'll show you on this machine. See where it says SP, LP, and SLP? That means standard play, long play, and super long play. Now, which one should you use? Well, keep in mind, the speed you record at does have something to do with the quality of the picture you wind up with. The faster the speed, and that means the SP, or standard play speed in VHS, or beta format's beta 2 speed, will make a sharper picture than the slower speeds which expand your taping time but give you a grainier picture. Now, on the other hand, the slower the recording speed, the more economically you're using your tape. Being able to squeeze four or six hours of programming onto a two-hour cassette can be a real money saver. So remember, when selecting a recording speed, consider quality versus economy. Now, something else to consider, a lot of you will find that some of your special effects, like picture search, freeze frame, and slow motion, cannot be seen on a tape recorded in one of the slower speeds. Now, don't be afraid to mix and match recording speeds on the same tape. For instance, if you recorded a one-hour show in the standard SP or Beta 2 speed, and now you've got an hour left on a two-hour tape, well, you can pick up right where you left off and stretch that leftover hour into two in order to kind of squeeze that movie on. Don't worry at all about the recording speed when you're playing back. Your VCR is designed to automatically adjust to the speed itself. You will not ever have to change the recording speed when you're playing back. In fact, if you try changing the recording speed while you're playing back a tape, you'll see it doesn't affect a thing. Your VCR, at times, can actually think for itself. I've been working on the railroad. Oh boy, I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Get me over to it. Oh, I need a little help. <laughs> to help you know where you are on a tape and to keep a record of what's located where on a cassette, all models come equipped with a counter. Now, the counter should be zeroed at the start of every tape. Then, if you make notes on your cassette boxes, you'll be able to whiz right to your child's favorite cartoon or write to your favorite cooking instructor for that recipe that you'd like to take one more look at before your mother-in-law comes to dinner. Now, most units also have a counter memory button. Here it is right here. Now, this is how it works. Whenever your memory button is on and you zero the counter, it sets your machine up to rewind exactly to that zero point. For instance, let's suppose we're watching a game and we're taping it. Let's press play and record here. Now, all of a sudden, you see a play called by another one of those blind umpires that you're always yelling about. Well, if you really quickly hit your memory button and zero your counter, then later on, after you've all finished watching the ending, or maybe just when the game is over, you can rewind your machine, and it'll go right back to that point so you can watch the play again. No looking around for it. You'll know later, when you learn how to use this, that I'm not joking when I say you'll be lost without them. See, I knew he did it that way. All machines have a pause button. And on some machines, the pause button is also your freeze frame button when you're playing back a tape. Watch this. Now, when you're recording, your pause button serves really an important function. Besides being fun to watch like this, it lets you make your tape pause right where it is so that you can edit out unwanted material. Not bad, huh? If you had pressed stop, your machine not only would have come to a full stop, but it would have backed up your tape several revolutions so that when you start it up again, you might just be recording over the last few seconds of a crucial scene. And it's really disappointing six months later when you go back and find out you missed that final kiss in a wonderful, gushy movie. But there is one thing to be aware of. When you use your pause button, it does cause some extra wear and tear, not only on your tapes, but on your video cassette recorder as well. I mean, the tape is paused, 
but the machines are still going and there's a lot of pressure over one point, it can wear down. And that's why the makers of all the machines have built in a special safety feature. It automatically disengages the pause mechanism after five minutes or so and switches the machine on stop. So it's fine to use your pause button for a couple of minutes, either to do oh, editing, maybe run to the fridge or the bathroom, but staying in pause position for too long is not a good idea. But what is a good idea is having some special features like freeze frame, slow motion, and scanning. One special note, often you'll find some of those only on your remote control unit, not on your machine. Now let's talk about some of the features. Scanning. Scanning allows you to look at a tape as it moves quickly forward or backward, like this. Yep, this is always a fun button to play with the searcher scan. But really, it does serve an important function. It means that you can more easily find that special scene in the movie that you've been searching for. I'll bet you know some people who eat an apple like that. Anyway, if your machine has slow motion, you can view your tapes at a fraction of the normal speed, like this. You think this is slow? Well, if you have a frame advance button, you can even see the frames one by one. Frame by frame. And last but not least, there's the freeze capability on many machines, and that's for all you armchair umpires and referees. <laughs> Should've it. It's kind of a cold, windy day outside today. Kind of a good day to stay inside, clean around the house, maybe clean your VCR. Right, Maynard? You know, proper maintenance of your VCR is one of the keys to its long, healthy life, also to the well-being of your cassette tapes. Now, most maintenance jobs do require the expertise of a professional, but there is something that I would like to show you, and you can do it yourself. That's cleaning the recording heads on your unit. Now, there are a number of ways that this can be accomplished, but only two are recommended by the experts that we talk to. The best of the two, they say, is to very carefully unscrew the top of your machine. Make sure your machine is unplugged, unlike Manny. Now, I've only got one screw left here. I've already got this started. Take the screws off and then gently, do not force it, gently take off the top of your machine. I'll lay it right here on the sofa. Move, Maynard. Now, in order to clean these heads yourself, you are going to need some video head cleaner liquid. I've got some right here. Also, a lint-free swab like this one. Now, make sure that you start with clean hands. Put a little bit of this on here. You don't have to just totally soak it, just a little bit. Now, watch what I'm going to do inside. I'm going to be cleaning the shiny sides of the drum here while I spin it on the top with my finger, and I want to be very careful not to touch the sides with my finger. All right, a few revolutions, and that's really it. That's all there is to it. Now, the second method that was recommended to us by the experts is a little bit easier, and that's why a lot of people prefer it, and that's using a special cleaning cassette. These cassettes are designed especially to clean video machine heads, and the cassettes come in two types, wet and dry. Our experts recommend the wet type not the dry type. Now here's how it works. You just take some video liquid cleaner and you just put it right onto the chamois and onto the felt. And by the way, this little tube came with the tape. Now I want to pop it into the machine. We'll put our power on. All right. Now watch what happens when I hit play. The chamois comes right out, wraps itself around the drum and cleans it. As to how many times a year you should do this, a good guideline is once every three, four months for the average user. If you use your VCR a lot, though, you may want to clean the heads more often. But of the two methods that we have described for cleaning heads, the second, using a head cleaning cassette, will be quicker and it will be easier than doing it yourself, but it will cost you about twice as much. So that might be something that you want to consider when head cleaning time rolls around. And one last maintenance tip. After you put your cover on, I'll just slide this one on a little bit here, you really should buy yourself a dust cover. 
Now, when your machine is not in use, this will protect it inside and out. Because let's face it, you probably keep your VCR in your family room, right? And where there are families, there's food, and there's drink, whoop, and there's accidents. Hmm. Maynard, the dust cover saved the day. Oh, it's not that bad, Manny. This is what you've all been waiting for, the cable hookup in your VCR. Remember I explained earlier how the basic hookup to your outdoor antenna works? Well, using your video machine along with a cable system is a little bit different. Before, your VCR sat between your antenna and your television. Now, your VCR sits between your cable box and your television. Now, how do the wires run? I'll show you. The wire that comes out of the wall, this is your cable wire right here, it runs into your cable box into input. The second cable runs from your output on your cable box into the VHF input on your VCR. Now a third cable runs from the VHF output on your VCR right into the VHF input on your television set. Now you are all hooked up. How do you select a channel? Well, first of all, your TV must be tuned into your VCR. We talked about this earlier. You must choose channels three or four, depending on which one is free of broadcasting in your area. Now, the channels on the TV are either three or four. What about the VCR? Well, this must be tuned in to your cable box. When your cable company came to your home to hook you up, they gave you a channel to use. On your VCR sit channel selector, you should choose that channel. This now, your cable box, is where you will choose the station that you want to watch. You can only record the channel that you're watching. One other point, you can only record one channel while you're away from home. But this is the simplest hookup. All right, let's talk now about cable-ready VCR units. If you don't know whether yours is cable-ready, just check your manual. I also want to limit us to areas across the country where there are no cable channels scrambled for things like movies and sports. So, here's what you need to know. What a cable-ready machine does is eliminate the need for the cable company's converter box. Now, you do still need to rent their cable line, and I'll show you where it goes. It'll be coming out of the wall but instead of going into their box, it will go right directly into the back of your VCR, right into the VHF input, the same place an antenna would go. A second cable then runs from the VHF output on your VCR right into the VHF input on your television set. So once again, you will not be needing the cable company's box. You can just return it to them. How do you tune in a channel? Well. The television, just the same as the last time, must be tuned to channel three or four, whichever one is free of broadcasting in your area. Now you're tuned into your VCR. The big difference. You're now going to select what channel you want to watch right on your VCR channel selector. You may say there are only 14 buttons, and that's true. But you can tune in each button to many different stations. You're only limited by what's at your fingertips. And the great thing is, is that now when you're away from home, you can record on any station, which means that your programmable is in great shape. And let's face it, that's what most of us bought our machines for. Now, if you have pay TV in your home, some of those channels coming in may be scrambled. And if you have a programmable VCR, wouldn't it be nice if you could leave home and record some of those scrambled channels along with all the other channels, there's only one way to do it. And that's by buying a little device called an up converter, which you can get at your local video store. Oh, they'll also be able to tell you if you have scrambled channels in your area. Now, let me tell you what this does. 
The up converter splits your incoming cable line, the line coming into your home, into two lines, a VHF and a UHF. Now let's follow the VHF line. Coming from the up converter box, it goes right in here to your cable box on input. From output on your cable box, it goes to the back of your VCR into VHF input. Once again, from VHF output on your VCR, it goes right into the VHF input on your television. So far, that's the same as other cable hookups. Now we've got our one other new line, the line that's really going to allow you to be taping other stations on your programmable. This is the UHF hookup coming from your up converter into the UHF input on the back of your VCR. It has twin leads. Then an antenna kind of wire will go from the twin leads, UHF output on the back of your VCR into the UHF input on your TV. Now, you've got all the cables hooked up. Now you need to fine tune your stations. Look for the fine tuning panel on your VCR. You're going to have to switch all these little switches here from VHF to UHF. Remember, we gave you a new UHF cable. Leave one, though, on the VHF. This is going to be given the station that your cable company told you to use. It will access your cable box and all those scrambled shows. Now, you're going to have to fine tune all the other stations to the channels that you want to watch. And once you have that done, you can then program in any of those stations scrambled or unscrambled so that you can record while you're away from home. And you're also going to be able to watch a scrambled show while taping another show. There's only one limitation. If you are taping a scrambled show, you've got to be watching that show. But that's a small price to pay for all the capability that the up converter gave you. You know, for every hookup that I've told you about today, there are a dozen others. And with the industry changing like it is, there's always going to be something new. So our recommendation to you is to consult your local video salesman. Ask him what's the best way to set up your machine in your area. To own a video unit is to have been bitten by the video bug. What a wonderful interest it is. The video world that you're entering will never bore you, not for a minute. There are new tapes, new developments in equipment, and in accessories coming out all the time. You can rent movies from the nearby video stores, and you can also join video clubs. Now comparison shop, because each club offers a different deal. And remember, when renting, really consider how long you need that tape, because time is money. Once you're in the swing of things, for far less than it would cost to bundle the family off to the movies or pay a babysitter, everyone at your house can be together in the comfort and safety of your own home, enjoying video entertainment. There are a number of video magazines to tickle your imagination, things like video review, video play, or home video. They'll give you ideas and they'll answer questions that you might have as your interest in video increases, and no doubt it will. And there are also books on the market filled with ideas and helpful information. Also catalogs filled with thousands of tapes that you can get. Now there are also special cabinets designed to hold your TV, your tapes, your VCR, and all other types of home entertainment equipment. If we didn't have to keep a close eye on our pocketbooks these days, we could really go hog wild. Home video, it is really so exciting. Just think. You can now take your old 8mm home movies into a photo store and they can transfer them right on to cassette tapes for you. Movie film gets brittle and snaps off with age. So what better way to preserve your home movie memories? And no more dragging out the projector or the screen either. Then you will really know that you're good and hooked when you feel a heavy weight on your shoulder because now 
you're entering the world of shooting, editing, and adding your own soundtracks. The sky is really the limit. Steven Spielberg, Francis Ford Coppola, look out! Here we come. That's all.